with Chumash and Tongva surviving the sentiment, the sediments the cement and the buildings and everything blocking and choking Earth Mother. So we're here to celebrate that we're here and connected to make sure that we carry a good message of being better relatives. Without that, any further ado, any delay, Tina Calderon. Me, honey, Hinkum. Hello, my relatives. It's so good to see so many people out here in the village of Yangna. I'd like to first start by acknowledging the ancestors of the area. The people of this area, as she said, they're Tongwa, but that's a relatively new term. I want to be very clear on that because our villages went from San Fernando Valley all the way to Huntington Beach and all the way over to uh, Riverside and Corona area. We were a huge nation, and we were comprised of many small villages. Yangna was a very large village where people would come to trade. And so the people who were from this area originally would actually introduce themselves by their village name, which is Yangna. So they would be Yang Abit or Yang Abitam, the people of Yangna. My village, my ancestral village, is Komikrana, which is in the Santa Monica Mountains. It's shared territory of the Shumash and the Tongva. Today they call us Tongva because of the history of us going through the mission period. They started calling us Gabrielinos. Gabrielino is not a tribe. So in unity, the people said, well, we need to have one name. And Tongva comes from Tongad, which means world to us. So Tongwa, Tongwangad, that's our world. So that's where that comes from. But more importantly is you all, what you're here for. Our people were caretakers for thousands of years and we lived upon our earth mother in unity, in reciprocity, never ever taking more than we needed. And I don't know what has happened in such a short time, less than 300 years, everything has flipped. It's all about greed, it's all about taking. And so to see all these youth standing up and saying, no more, that's it. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, and I know my ancestors are smiling on you because that's the way you're supposed to be. You're supposed to live in unity and reciprocity. You're supposed to defend the Earth Mother who gives us everything we need to survive. It's for the next seven generations. We have always said that for the next seven generations, we need to do what is right. And so all of you youth who are standing up, do not let anyone bring you down. Be strong, because they will try. Whenever you're doing the right thing, you will be attacked by certain people, but it's just a deterrent. They're trying to keep you from doing what you need to do. You have it in here. You know what you're doing is right. So stand up, be strong. And that's the message I bring to you today. I come to support. I come to stand behind you. Because you all are giving so much of yourself. And it's going to be a difficult road. But you're strong. You can do it. Nine years old and he's looking up to you that are a little older and hopefully he'll be joining your ranks soon. So we'd like to offer a song. Sometimes we do a prayer, sometimes we do an ancestor song, but I'd like to do a song for you today. And it talks about how the people need to rise up, stand strong, know that we are beautiful beings created by the Creator and we are gonna do what's right in future. Ah, he can shishina mo. Ah, he can shishina mo. Oh,
let's heal today, together in this fight. And it is great to be in Los Angeles, in California. And I, I want to say a special thank you to youth organizers in Los Angeles who made this possible. The village of LA is Yanga. The people were in Yava town. Now they are often called Gabrielino Tonga for the entire Los Angeles basin. And I met with survivors who showed me around the devastation. Street after street with no houses left. I heard heartbreaking stories. 18,000 buildings were destroyed. And at least 86 people died. Today in California, we can see the wildfires happening just around the corner. Wildfires that are being intensified by the climate crisis. But it's not just here. Everywhere around the world, we can see these horrible environmental feedbacks that countless of people are suffering and dying from. Right now, we are living in the beginning of a climate and ecological breakdown. And we cannot continue to look away from this crisis anymore. I mean, what is it that seems to be hard, so hard to understand? We have been repeating the same message over and over again. The scientists have been repeating the same message over and over and over again. And yet, they are still not being listened to. It is the year 2019. Why is the world still ignoring the science and those most affected by this crisis. Why are the people in power still pretending that everything is fine and as if we could just continue to live like now as if there was no tomorrow? Well, there is a tomorrow. It is the tomorrow when we, young people, will live. And we need to fight for that tomorrow, and we need to protect it as if our lives depended on it, because it does. People are already suffering and dying from the climate and ecological emergency. And it will continue to get worse. Doesn't this mean anything to the decision makers? We will, I will never understand how they can put short-term interests above human lives, above the planet itself, and our very future.
that the people in power don't get away with continuing right now. The older generations are failing us. They are failing future generations. But future generations do not have a voice. And the biosphere doesn't have a voice. So we will be the voice that speaks up for them. And we will be the voice that speaks up for ourselves. And that right now, that is what we are doing. We are speaking up. And that is what we will continue to do every Friday when we strive and every single day that goes by. We are speaking up and we will not be silenced. Do you think they are listening to us? Well, we will make them listen. Yeah!